We all know that getting your driver license can be a big deal. In fact, it can be life-changing. A driver license can give you freedom and independence, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. And that's why it's important to always put safety first. You need to fully understand and follow the rules of the road. Traffic signs come in different shapes, colors, and sizes, and each one provides important information designed to keep you and other drivers moving safely. While you'll see a lot of different messages, you'll be glad to know they have distinct designs related to three basic categories, regulatory, warning, and caution. Regulatory signs are usually white and red and are the ones that reinforce traffic laws. These are the ones you must obey. They'll show you how fast you can legally travel and when you need to stop. If you're allowed to make a right turn, left turn, or U-turn, and when you should not enter a street because traffic will be coming towards you, like a freeway off-ramp or one-way street. Bright yellow signs are designed to grab your attention and warn you about potential hazards or special road conditions that may require you to slow down to prevent an accident. Here are some examples. Wet or icy roads, merging traffic, pedestrian crosswalk, traffic signal light, sharp turn, curve, or crossroad. Since these warning signs are shaped like a diamond, they're helpful in situations like heavy fog. You may not be able to read them, but you know by their shape that you need to remain alert. And if you see signs with eye-catching fluorescent yellow-green backgrounds, be on the lookout for pedestrians, bicycles, playgrounds, and schools. When you see an orange sign, you'll likely encounter highway construction or road maintenance. You need to proceed with caution and watch for workers, some of whom may be directing traffic. Keep an eye out for construction equipment, road, or lane closures. And obey posted speed limits because in these zones, traffic fines are doubled. There are other helpful signs as well. Informational or guide signs make it easy to find destinations points of interest, and important services. You've buckled your seatbelt and you're ready to hit the road. But before pulling out into traffic, you need to understand the meaning of all those road markings. They're painted in different colors, patterns, and symbols. They're meant to keep traffic moving smoothly, but more importantly, to allow drivers like yourself to do it safely. First, you'll notice the lines on the road are painted in white and yellow, and each color provides important information about what you can and can't do while you're driving. White lines indicate traffic is moving in the same direction. When they're broken, you may change lanes if it's safe to do so. Remember to use your blinker. Look in the rear and side view mirrors and over your shoulder, your blind spot, to make sure the lane is clear before moving over. A solid white line means you need to stay in your lane, and it also marks the shoulder of the roadway. Yellow lines divide traffic moving in opposite directions. You can pass on a two-way road if the yellow center line is broken, but if there is also a solid yellow line and you're driving next to that solid line, you cannot pass. Think of it as an imaginary concrete barrier. If you see two parallel solid yellow lines, then drivers on both sides of the road cannot pass. Even if you think you can do so safely, don't even think about it. Those double yellow lines are there to keep you and other drivers safe and alive. No passing. You'll also encounter lanes to help you make left or right-hand turns. Many times, they're marked with arrows pointing in the direction in which you can turn. If you use a center left-hand turn lane, you'll have to cross in front of oncoming traffic, so make sure you proceed only when it's safe to do so. The same goes for lanes that only allow you to make a right-hand turn. Also, be aware that you'll be sharing the road with bicyclists. The rules are clear. You cannot drive your car on a bicycle lane except under limited circumstances. To park, prepare to make a turn from an intersection, and enter or leave the road. It's important you double-check to make sure the bicycle lane is clear before you enter the lane. In addition to bicycles, you'll need to pay close attention for pedestrians who may be attempting to cross the street. Many crosswalks are marked with a series of large white stripes, so when you see them and people nearby, slow down and proceed with caution. 
As you drive down the road, make sure you pay close attention to the speed limit signs. They're designed to save lives by reducing risks that could cause collisions. That's why it's important that you don't exceed the posted speed limit. It's also illegal. Speed limits are based on ideal road and weather conditions. You need to take into consideration the number and speed of other vehicles on the road, the type of road surface, is it smooth, rough, wet or dry, and whether it's raining, foggy, snowing, windy or dusty. Use common sense. If you approach a hazard, encounter heavy traffic or bad weather conditions, slow down. This will improve your ability to take evasive action safely, but hopefully you won't find yourself in that situation. When road conditions are good, you should not drive much slower than the cars around you. Impeding the flow of traffic is unsafe, and doing so could get you a ticket. Remember, slower traffic should stay in the right lane so others can pass. One of the most common hazard areas on the road is an intersection because it's the spot where drivers cross paths. Whether you're an experienced or inexperienced driver, intersections can be confusing to maneuver. They come with traffic lights, stop signs, turning lanes, and a lot of other drivers who are focused on getting to their destination. The best way to safely maneuver through an intersection is to recognize the different types and understand the rules associated with them. Intersections are often described as controlled or uncontrolled. Controlled intersections are most common and refer to those that have stop signs or traffic signals. Uncontrolled intersections are found primarily in rural areas with little traffic and often have warning signs instead of traffic signals or stop signs. You should proceed slowly and carefully, look for cars coming from other directions, and use common sense when entering these intersections. A four-way intersection is generally controlled by a traffic signal or stop signs. If there's a traffic light, you can only drive through the intersection when the light is green. At intersections with stop signs, cars that reach the intersection first have the right-of-way. But if two cars arrive at the same time, the car on the left must yield to the right-of-way to the one on the right. In other words, the car on the right is allowed to proceed through the intersection first. If you approach an intersection with a flashing red signal light, it's the same as approaching a stop sign, and you need to follow the right-of-way rules. A T-junction is the spot where a street meets a major roadway. Cars on the street will usually encounter a stop sign, while those on the main roadway will continue driving because they have the right-of-way. If you're driving on the street and approach a major roadway, come to a complete stop and look in both directions to make sure you can safely pull out onto the road. A traffic circle or roundabout is used to control an intersection with the intent of keeping traffic moving. As you approach a roundabout, you must yield to oncoming traffic. Then, turn right so you're traveling around the circle in a counterclockwise fashion. Turn right again to exit onto the road you are seeking. It's important not to stop while driving in a roundabout because pile-ups can happen quickly. You'll encounter turning lanes at intersections with lots of traffic. Most of the time these lanes are designated for drivers who want to turn left and they are generally controlled by a traffic light. Turning lanes are marked with a painted arrow on the pavement and an arrow usually will appear on the traffic light. If you drive into a turning lane, you must follow through with the turn. You cannot drive straight. At most intersections, pedestrian crosswalks are common, so you need to remain alert, and you must yield to pedestrians crossing the street. The number one rule to staying safe when you encounter an intersection is to slow down. Pay attention to traffic signals, follow right-of-way rules, and watch out for pedestrians. As you drive, you'll encounter traffic signals at busy intersections. These signal lights are important because they control the flow of traffic, reduce collisions, and allow pedestrians to cross the street safely. You'll see traffic signals along the side of the road or above the intersection. The most common traffic signal consists of three colors, red, yellow, and green, and each one conveys a specific message. A red traffic signal means stop. You must come to a complete stop at the marked stop line on the pavement or before entering a crosswalk. 
If there is no marking, then stop before you enter the intersection. If you plan to make a right turn at the intersection and there is no sign prohibiting it, you may proceed after you've made a complete stop and check that there is no cross traffic. The same applies when making a left turn at a red light, but only when turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street. A yellow traffic signal warns that the signal is about to change red. You should be prepared to stop. If you can't do that safely, look out for other vehicles that may enter the intersection when the light changes and proceed with caution. A green traffic signal means go. You can drive through the intersection, but only after yielding the right of way to pedestrians or other cars. Do not enter the intersection if you can't get completely through it before the traffic signal light turns red. If you block the intersection, you can get a ticket. Sometimes you may see a flashing traffic signal. If it's flashing red, you must come to a complete stop. Traffic within the intersection or crosswalk has the right of way. So wait until it's safe to drive through the intersection. If the signal is flashing yellow, slow down, check your surroundings, and proceed with caution. At some of the busier intersections, the traffic signal may also show arrows, which will point in the direction that you're allowed to turn. For example, if you're in a designated turn lane and the arrow points to the left, you may turn in that direction only when the arrow is green. You cannot turn if the arrow is red. But what should you do if the traffic signal lights are not working? In this case, you should approach the intersection as if it's controlled by stop signs in all directions. Make a full and complete stop and check traffic in all directions before proceeding. Remember, following the rules of the road is important in keeping you and others safe. One of the best ways to avoid a collision is to use turn signals to let other drivers know your intentions. If you plan to make a turn, change lanes, merge with traffic, pull to the side of the road, or park. Even if you don't see other vehicles or pedestrians in the area, you must use your turn signals. A vehicle you do not see may suddenly appear and hit you if the driver does not know your intentions. Remember to always cancel your signal after turning. So when should you use your turn signal? When you turn left or right, use the lane closest to the direction in which you're turning. Use your turn signal about 100 feet before you reach the turning point. That's the equivalent to about eight car lengths. If you plan to turn just beyond an intersection into a driveway or parking lot, for example, wait to signal until you are in the intersection. If you signal too early, the other driver may think you plan to turn into the intersection and may pull out in front of you. When driving on a freeway, you should use your turn signal when entering and exiting and at least five seconds before you change lanes or pass another vehicle. Always check your mirrors and your blind spot by looking over the appropriate shoulder to make sure the lane is clear before moving into it. If your signal lights are not working or bright sunlight makes them difficult to see, you should use hand and arm signals. When turning left, extend your arm straight outwards. When turning right, bend your arm at the elbow with your hand pointing upward. To indicate you're going to stop, bend your arm at the elbow with your hand and forearm toward the ground. Your palm should be open and facing the vehicles behind you. Using these important signals should be a habit in every situation. When you use your turn signals or hand gestures, you reduce your chances of being involved in traffic collisions. It's not only the safe thing to do, it's the law. Not using turn signals is a moving violation that could result in a traffic fine and a point on your driving record. To learn Turning is one of the basic maneuvers of driving and you should always use your turn signal. There are some basic rules you should follow when you prepare to turn. Begin signaling about 100 feet before your turn. Look in all directions for traffic that may be approaching, especially for motorcycles, which may be more difficult to see. Reduce your speed. Keep your wheels straight until you actually make your turn. If your wheels are turned and you're hit from behind, your vehicle could be pushed into oncoming traffic. Watch for pedestrians, bicyclists, and people in wheelchairs or pushing strollers, especially when making right turns. 
When you're ready to make your turn, you need to make sure your vehicle is in the correct lane and that you're following the rules of the road. Here are some of the most common situations. To make a right turn, drive close to the right edge of the road. If there's a bike lane, drive into the lane no more than 200 feet before the turn. Stop behind the white limit line, look both ways, and turn when it's safe. Complete your turn into the right lane. Do not swing wide into another lane of traffic because you might be involved in a collision. If you approach a red traffic signal light and want to turn right, treat the red light as a stop sign. You can turn right when it's safe as long as there are no signs prohibiting it. Left turns may be a bit more challenging since you will need to evaluate different types of road configurations. It's important that you don't turn your wheels too soon because you may turn into the lane of traffic coming toward you. If you're traveling on a two-way road and making a left turn onto another two-way road, drive close to the center divider line, look over your left shoulder, and reduce your speed. Check for vehicles that are in the intersection or approaching it. When it's safe, make your turn and be sure to end your turn on the right side of the center divider line. If you're turning left from a one-way road onto another one-way road, keep in mind that you can proceed on a red light, as long as you treat it as a stop sign and proceed when it's safe. Approach the turn from the far left lane unless there are other designated turn lanes. End your turn in any lane that is safely open. At some intersections, arrows may be painted on the pavement to show designated turn lanes, and signal lights may be used to assist you with your protected turn. Do not turn right or left on a red arrow. A green arrow means it's safe to turn. Remember, you should still look in all directions and proceed with caution. You may also encounter center turn lanes. These are located in the middle of a two-way street and are marked on both sides with two painted lines. The inner one is broken, the outer one is solid. Look over your left shoulder to make sure the lane is clear before entering it, and be on the lookout for other vehicles coming toward you within the center lane. This lane is not a traffic or passing lane. You can only drive for 200 feet in the center lane. A U-turn is turning your vehicle around in the street to go back the way you came. To make a U-turn, signal and use the far left lane. Never make a U-turn where a no U-turn sign is posted, at or on a railroad crossing, crossing two sets of double yellow lines, where you can't see clearly 200 feet in each direction, on a one-way street, in front of a fire station, and never use a fire station driveway. In business districts, turn only at an intersection where openings are provided for turns unless a sign prohibits it. While you're driving, it's important that you stay alert and respect the right-of-way of others. What does that mean? Simply put, right-of-way rules determine who has the legal right to go first on the road. Remember, you're sharing the road with other drivers, pedestrians, bicycles, and motorcycle riders, and these rules help to promote traffic safety. Here are some of the most common situations. Pedestrians have the right-of-way when they're crossing the street and it doesn't matter whether they're in a marked crosswalk or not. If you see a person getting ready to cross the street or they've already stepped off the curb, you must stop. Keep in mind that if you see a car stopped ahead of you, don't attempt to drive around it because pedestrians may be crossing the street and you cannot see them. You should also give the right of way to emergency vehicles that have their emergency lights on. Pull to the right edge of the road and wait for them to pass. Make sure you check your mirrors and over your shoulder to make sure no other vehicles are coming before you merge back into traffic. It is illegal to pass a school bus that has stopped and its red lights are flashing. Children are likely getting off the bus and may attempt to cross the street. Therefore, you must wait until the red lights have stopped flashing before proceeding or passing. At intersections without stop or yield signs, slow down and be ready to stop. Traffic and pedestrians either entering or already in the intersection have the right of way. Also, you must yield to vehicles or bicycles that arrive first or are to the right of you if you both pull up at the same time. 
On steep mountain roads where neither vehicle can pass, the vehicle facing downhill must yield the right-of-way by backing up until the vehicle going uphill can pass. The reason is that the downhill facing vehicle has greater control when backing up. Even if you have the right of way, you should never assume that other drivers will yield, so you should use common sense. Be courteous and try to anticipate the other driver's actions before attempting to proceed first. When parking your car, you need to be aware of your surroundings. This means look out for other vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. First, you should be familiar with painted curbs and their meanings. If a curb is painted white, you can only stop long enough to pick up or drop off passengers. Green means you can only park for a limited amount of time. Look for posted signs. Yellow curbs are generally used by commercial vehicles to load and unload passengers or freight. If you're not driving a commercial vehicle, you can still use the area, but you cannot leave your car unattended. If you see a red curb, don't even think about stopping there. These are saved for emergency vehicles only. And blue curbs or markings indicate parking spots reserved for vehicles that display a placard or special license plate for disabled persons. You also cannot park in areas marked with diagonal lines next to a disabled parking spot. When parking on a hill, it's important to point your front wheels in the direction that will prevent your car from rolling into the street should your brakes fail. Follow these guidelines. If your car is facing downhill, turn your front wheels into the curb and set your parking brake. If your car is facing uphill, turn your wheels away from the curb and let your car roll back a few inches so the wheel gently touches the curb and set your parking brake. If you're headed either uphill or downhill and there is no curb, point your wheels in a direction that will allow your car to roll away from the center of the road if your brakes fail. You should be aware that there are spots where you are not allowed to park. Here are some common examples. If a no parking sign is posted, on a marked or unmarked crosswalk, sidewalk, or in front of a driveway, within 15 feet of a fire hydrant, on the wrong side of the street, or on a freeway, except in an emergency or when law enforcement pulls you over. Make sure you park completely off the pavement so other vehicles can pass by. When driving, it's important that you give yourself enough distance behind other vehicles. Following a vehicle too closely is often referred to as tailgating. Don't be a tailgater. Most rear-end collisions are caused by tailgating because it makes it difficult to see beyond the car in front of you. If it stops suddenly to avoid a hazard, you may not have enough time to react appropriately. To help identify whether you're at a good following distance, you should practice the three-second rule. When a vehicle in front of you passes a certain point, like a sign, count 1001, 1002, 1003. If you pass the same point before you stop counting, you're following too closely. Increase your distance and count again. You should incorporate a four-second rule when driving on slippery roads, towing a trailer, or carrying a heavy load, which makes it harder to stop, merging onto a freeway, and following large vehicles that block your view ahead. The extra room allows you to see around them. A lot of drivers don't realize that big rigs take longer to stop than other vehicles traveling at the same speed. So, if you pass one, give yourself enough distance when you merge in front of them. Don't suddenly slow down or stop because the truck driver may not be able to stop quickly enough to avoid hitting you. Also, if another vehicle merges in front of you too closely, take your foot off the accelerator and slow down to increase your distance. When merging onto a freeway, you should enter at or near the speed of traffic. Do not stop before merging into freeway traffic unless it's absolutely necessary. Do not try to squeeze into a gap that's too small. Use your mirrors and turn signals. Always look over your shoulder before changing lanes, and if you need to cross several freeway lanes, cross them one at a time. Once you have merged into your desired lane, be sure to reach and maintain a safe following distance. Whenever you cross or enter city or highway traffic from a complete stop, you need a large enough gap to get your car up to the speed of other vehicles. 
you need a gap that is about half a block on city streets and a full block on the highway. Also, if you're driving too slowly and you look in your rearview mirror to see five or more cars lined up behind you, you must pull over at the first available turnout and let them pass. One thing to remember is that you must always be a defensive driver. Keep a watchful eye out for potential dangers like drivers who are distracted, can't see you because their view is blocked, pulling out of driveways or parking spaces, and pass you when there is a curve and oncoming traffic. Drive responsibly. One of the most important safety features on your vehicle is your headlights. Headlights increase your visibility and ensure other drivers can see you. You should remember to use your headlights 30 minutes after sunset to 30 minutes before sunrise. Any time conditions such as clouds, rain, snow, dust, smoke, or fog prevent you from seeing other vehicles. When road signs dictate the use of headlights. When driving on small country or mountain roads, even on sunny days. It's important to point out that you should always use your low beams when you're driving in fog, rain, or snow. Do not use your high beams. The light will reflect back and cause glare, making it difficult to see. In California, if weather conditions require you to use your windshield wipers, you are required to turn on your low beam headlights. It's the law. If you're driving at night, make sure you can stop within the distance that's lighted by your headlights. If you use your high beams, dim your lights for oncoming traffic and when approaching a vehicle from behind. It's also a good idea to reduce your speed at night and look out for pedestrians and motorcycles because they're more difficult to see when it's dark. If you see a collision ahead, warn the drivers behind you by turning on your emergency flashers or tapping on your brake pedal quickly three or four times. You can also use the hand signal for slowing and stopping. If you're on the freeway and experience car trouble, turn on your emergency flashers. Safely pull to the right shoulder if possible. Avoid stopping just over a hill or around a corner to make sure other drivers can clearly see you. If you get out of your car, exit on the right side, away from traffic. Use the same side when getting back into your car. If you're waiting for assistance, stay inside your car until help arrives. 